Hi Year 11 Mathematics Advanced students. Today we're continuing on with the topic of functions and we're learning about linear functions. So a linear function is a function that when graphed forms a straight line with one x-intercept and one y-intercept. It has the form of y equals mx plus c or it has the general form of ax plus by plus c equals zero. So when graphing linear functions, they can be graphed by finding the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So for our examples, we want to find the x and y intercepts and graph. So for 1a, we have y equals 2x minus 4. So let's find the y-intercept. When we do that, we let x equal 0. So that means y will equal 2 times our x of 0 minus 4. So y equals 0 minus 4. So y equals negative 4. Therefore, our y-intercept is negative 4, which is here. Then we need to find our x-intercept. So we let y equal 0. So we have 0, or our y, equals 2x minus 4. Now we need to rearrange our equation because we're solving for x. So we plus 4 to both sides of our equation leaving us with 4 equals 2x. We then divide both sides by 2, so we get x equals 2. Therefore, our x-intercept is 2, which is here. So now that we have our y and our x-intercept, we can graph these using a straight line. So if you grab a ruler and you want to go through the two points, alrighty? So let's make sure we do that. So it's really hard to keep a ruler straight on the iPad. So I apologize, but I am trying my hardest. So there is our, um, our graph of our straight line, y equals 2x minus 4. So we add arrows on both side, both ends of our line. We write y equals 2x minus 4. The reason we add arrows is because it means that this line is continuous. It continues on. Our next um, part B of this example, so we need to find the x and y intercepts and then graph x plus 2y plus 6 equals 0. So for our y intercept, we let x equal 0. So x is 0 plus 2y plus 6 to equal 0. And now we're solving for y. So we're going to minus 6 to both sides of our equation. We have 2y equals negative 6. And then we're dividing both sides by 2. So we get y equals negative 3. So therefore, our y-intercept is negative 3. So we're going to put a dot at negative 3 on our y-axis, where our y-intercept is. Then we need to find our x-intercept. And so when we do that, we let y equal 0. So we have x plus 2 times our y of 0 plus 6 equals 0, which leaves us with x plus 6 equals 0. So we minus our 6 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 6. So that would be here on our graph. So now that we have our x-intercept and our y-intercept, we can connect um, these dots together. And so you get a ruler. And you draw a straight line connecting them together like so. Oops. Ah. How do I get out of that? Sorry. Okay. And then we add arrows at either end of our graph. And we state our equation on our graph. So x plus 2y plus 6 equals 0. So that is how we graph linear functions. Next, we need to talk about the domain and range of linear functions. So the domain of a linear function is negative infinity to infinity, which is all real numbers. And the range of a linear function is also negative infinity to infinity, which is all real numbers. This is because our linear functions continue on. So when we have linear functions, we also have direct linear variation. So direct linear variation functions have the form of y equals kx. So direct linear variation functions are used for um, when we have a proportionality constant. So this is our k, which is our proportionality constant, and it's also the gradient. So 
we use these when we're talking about business and we just want to draw a straight straight line um, for this. So as the value of x varies, the value of y also varies indirectly. And direct linear functions always pass through the origin. So always pass through 0, 0. So let's have a look at an example. So we have that Hugo earns $20 an hour. We want to find the equation for Hugo's income for working X hours. So if we thought about it, for the first hour that Hugo works, he will get $20. For the second hour that Hugo works, he will get two lots of $20. So that's the same as 20 times 2, which equals $40. For the third hour that Hugo works, he'll have three lots of $20, which is the same as 20 times three, which is $60. So if we use our equation, y equals kx, if we look at this, we are changing our x each time, which is our hours, so our first, second, and third. And what we're timesing our hours by each time is $20. So that means our k is going to equal our $20. So and our equation for Hugo's income, changing our y's to i's, okay, because it says Hugo's income is i, is i equals 20x. Moving on to horizontal and vertical lines. So... We have horizontal and vertical lines. So for horizontal lines, y equals b is a horizontal line where it cuts the y-axis at b. So it cuts it here. So our y-intercept equals b, where y equals b is a many-to-one function. Our domain is negative infinity to infinity because for our x values, it goes all the way across the x-axis. So we have all real x values. And our range is just b, because for our y values, it's only this one value of b. For vertical lines, we have x equals a is a vertical line where it cuts the x-axis at a. So at this point here, so the x-intercept equals a, and x equals a is a many-to-one function. The domain is just a, so we use our square brackets to recognize this, that it's just the value of a. So for the x values, the only x value that x equals a has is a. And for our range, it's unlimited. It's all our y values. So we go negative infinity to infinity. So let's have a look at some examples. Let's sketch the graph on a number plane and the state, the domain and range. So our first one is y equals two. So when it's y equals, that means that our y intercept is two. Okay, so we're going to cross, we're going to get a line at our y-intercept of 2. So that means we have a straight line going exactly through y equals 2. Let's add arrows at the end of our line and write our equation of y equals 2. So learning what we just learned about horizontal lines, because y equals 2 is a horizontal line, we know that our domain for our x values is negative infinity to infinity. And our range is what y values it can be. So our range is just the y value of 2. Looking at our second example, so example b in 3, we want to sketch the graph on a number plane and state its domain of x equals minus 1. So when it's x equals minus 1, it means that it has an x-intercept of minus 1. So it is going to be a vertical line going through minus 1, like so. So let's add arrows on each end and write our equation, x equals minus 1 on our graph. So now what we know about vertical lines is our domain is what x values it can be. So the only x value our graph y equals, uh, x equals negative 1 is, is negative 1. So we do our square brackets, stating negative 1. And our range can be all of the y values. It's unlimited. So we do negative infinity to infinity, so all real numbers. Now that is the end of the theory notes for um, linear functions. If you are following the Maths in Focus textbooks, if you're using the advanced textbooks, you are now complete exercise 304. If you are uh, using the extension 1 textbook, you would now complete exercise 404.